Well, boys and girls, it's all over. I did say it was either going to be tonight or tomorrow. And uh, I got to tell you, Monday night did not end with a bang uh, for college football. did not end with an absolute good game. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, first off, we got to... We got to talk about college game day. You know, Kirk Kirk Street had the whole, you know, big speech. You know about you know the pro about the protests and whatnot and all the unrest that's been going on in our country. Um, as an African American individual, I really am appreciative of what Herb Street had to say, and he's right. You know, we got to make a change in this country. I mean, it it's. It's been time to make a change in this country, and if you don't believe that, then something's wrong with you. And yeah, game day didn't look um, the greatest. Um, it was a little bit weird. You know, you had some, you know, you had Lee Corso <laughs> with a desk with paper cutouts of the whole crew and everybody. Um, but it's going to. But that was pretty interesting, you know. For just this week, um, they'll be back on the road next week down there at Wake Forest. You know, with Clemson taking on Wake Forest, and the ACC starts up play. Um, a couple of other things of note before we talk about the games. Actually, um, first off, Rice, what is your problem, big guys? What is your problem, like? Um, you're can you're you're postponing games left and right. You said you guys said you weren't gonna start practicing until September. Um, what's going on? You know, conference games need to be played. The teams that already started playing, Houston is playing too. Same area as Rice down there in Houston. Houston's playing, so Rice needs to get it together. And the second thing is, is that another game has been rescheduled. Um, it will be Tulsa, Oklahoma State that gets rescheduled to September 19th. There, the, there's been conflicting things about this. Apparently, it was either the hurricane, Hurricane Laura, um, or, you know, Tulsa didn't have enough time to practice or something like that, or COVID cases. It, it just really depends. And we'll talk about, you know, some more stuff. Um, later on this week when it comes to, you know, week two and everything like that. But, yeah, I don't know who's going to broadcast that game. Um, I'm sure it'll be, you know, either ESPN or Fox. I mean, it, it just is what it is at this point because it's Big 12 and it's, that's their contract, you know, as far as television goes. But, really... First things first, we gotta talk about Marshall and Grant Wells. Grant Wells did an absolutely great job in his debut. 307 yards, four touchdowns, just an absolutely beautiful performance. Marshall easily takes care of Eastern Kentucky, 59 to nothing. Easily takes care. Of Eastern Kentucky has a couple more games left in their season. Um, as far you know, as non-conference stuff goes, because uh, the rest of the F FCS conferences are seemingly trying to play in the spring, when nobody's going to be watching that. I mean, they'd be doing something else, you know, indoor football. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, then the other game at that same time slotted about 12 o'clock. Whoo boy, what a clinic! What a clinic! Army did on Middle Tennessee. You know, just, oh, my goodness. Man, 13 to 15 on third down. Several long possessions, including a 19-play, 99-yard drive, suffocating defense. Most of them just didn't know what to do. Um, they, they would turn the ball over make stupid mistakes. The dumbest mistake I've ever seen. Um, I think this is the dumbest you know play that I've seen in a long time where Middle Tennessee had the ball with about 40 seconds left in the first half. And then, you know, they just let the time run out. Didn't even call on timeouts. Nobody said anything. The announcer said nothing. 
So, um, Mr. Stocksteel, you have something to, you have something to figure out out there. You know, down there in Tennessee, you guys need to get it together if you want a conference championship at the Conference USA this year. Um, next up, Jake Spavitz Hall and the Texas State Bobcats. They fought hard against Shane Bouchelle and the SMU Mustangs. They fought very hard. Um, you know, Spavitz Hall's, you know, he's calling the plays. He's calling the shots now. And they did a lot better, you know, but it was a struggle for some parts of the game for Texas State. And, you know, they kept it close to SMU for a while, but again, you know, SMU just had too much firepower, you know. They, they still had Roberson out there at wide receiver, and he was tearing up that Texas State defense. Um, next up... You know, Sonny Dykes um, and SMU, they could have the potential to, you know, compete for an American Conference Championship this year if things go as planned. I mean, things have already not gone as planned, but, you know, things could get even better. So, you know, there's that. You know, SMU's offense was looking good. They just need to clean up the turnovers. They had three of them. Three of them. Um... What about my UNT Mean Green? What about them? Um, here's here's a problem. Of course, now this is affects me locally here, you know, out here in the state of Texas, and because I'm an alumnus, stuff like that. People were upset um, because you know graduation ceremonies didn't happen and things like that. I don't know about other places. But here, graduation ceremonies were just, were just not even going to happen. The band wasn't even supposed to come to the stadium at Apagee. Um, and people were upset. The Twitter mob got upset. I mean, rightfully so. And, you know, it's a, it's a lot of things that UNT has done lately that has been really, you know, type of scummy. But... Here, this game right here gets Houston Baptist. Jason Bean went off. 217 passing yards, four touchdowns. You know, and he could be something out there. Seth Luttrell may have somebody that can replace Mason Vine. And even though Mason Vine was injury prone as all hell, um, I think Bean will have a nice career there. Um, you know, I'm not going to be really following UNT football like that. You know, all the time, but you know, if something big happens, then it will happen like a couple years ago with Arkansas. It will happen. Meanwhile, Memphis, oh, Memphis, they did, they did okay. They did okay. They shut down Arkansas State. They didn't have Kenneth Gainwell. Um, but you know, it was good, it was good. Rodriguez Clark, you know, he did good. He did good. He, you know, he had over 100 yards rushing. And things just went well for the Memphis Tigers. I think they are also very much in the mix for an American Conference Championship. Yeah, UCF's the favorite right now, but Memphis, SMU, you know, if Navy could get their act together, you know, Cincinnati's still on the mix. You know, it, it's going to be a long race for the American. And the title is just not out of, it's not out of reach. It is in striking distance. And before we talk about Monday night's game, we're going to talk about UTEP. Oh, UTEP. Oh, boy. Whew, boy. Yeah, you kind of scared me there. You kind of scared me. You had a 11 game losing streak. You almost lost to Stephen L. Austin. You got to get it together, guys. You know, Deion Hankins, he is a pretty interesting quarterback out there. But um, UTEP looking like another bad year for them. Yeah. Whew. Boy. And lastly, but not leastly, we have BYU 
led by Kalani Satake and Zach Wilson and the rest, taking on the Navy midshipmen, but led by Ken Nee Matalolo and a new quarterback replacing Malcolm Perry. And they talk, and ESPN just uh, was just. I don't even know how to explain it. They were, they were really talking about my comparison for like the first fifteen or twenty minutes of this game, and then, you know, Bill Belichick came on later on, and I had turned the game off by this point because yeah, BYU just shut down the flex bone, shut them down. You know, it was it was terrible for BYU for Navy. You know, not BYU, for Navy. Um, just couldn't get anything going. I forgot the new quarterback's name already. I think his name was like Morris or something like that. He, he just didn't, he didn't look too good. And you have to run the flex bone spread option, triple option offense, whatever you want to call it, effectively. And if you can't do that, you're going to have a bad time. And, you know, Navy was able to get three points, but, BYU put up a 50 burger on 55 points. And, I mean, it's just like, good God, you know, this game was like scheduled very late in, in August. And things, you know, things look surreal, no fans. But at the end of the day, you know, BYU was able to just do what they wanted. And they have seven games left. It's not the. Greatest schedule again, you know, most of their schedule is completely wiped out by COVID and, you know, the Pac-12 Big, you know, the Pac-12 Big Ten, Mountain West, and MAC canceling the season. It's basically just destroying BYU's schedule. Um, BYU, they have another flex bone, spread option, triple option team awaiting them in a couple weeks on CBS. You know, actual CBS, not CBS Sports Network, actual CBS. I know, right? Crazy. In Army. And that should be a very interesting matchup right there, let me tell you. But I think the thing we learned most in week one is that it's going to be interesting. You know, the season... You know, the season may not have started off the way everybody wanted with the games that everybody watching, you know, we were we were thinking about another Alabama, you know, versus like, I don't know, like Duke or something in a kickoff classic in like a neutral site game. Or Florida State, West Virginia, which was at which is an actual neutral site game for this year that was supposed to be played. You know, and things are looking up. Yeah, there's going to still be, you know, delays and cancellations and whatnot. But we have football, and football is back. It Again, right now, it may not be the best, but it's what we got. And I'm loving every second of it. So, with that all being said, everybody, uh, I have posted, you know, the link to this channel in about three different subreddits. And I'm hoping I get some subscribers from that. And I will sub back to your channel if you do so. You know, if you see the link in Reddit and you, you know, you subscribe and whatnot, I'll sub back. I don't care what the content is, I'll sub back. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for week two previews for college football. I'm so excited. It's going to be a fun week two now. And I just can't wait to see more. Have a good night, everybody.